Judge Andrew Napolitano, Fox News uh, senior judicial analyst. Um, I just want to mention before we go to this topic that there is a lot going on in the House right now. There's a suggestion or, you know, the numbers are pointing in the direction that could mean that the House will not go to conference on this tax bill which means that there's the potential for this tax bill, which has been carefully shepherded through the House, and now the Senate may not go to conference. It's a very big deal, and I assure you that we're on top of it. We're going to get you the breaking news as that comes in. Um, but, Judge, to this story, which was the, the other big, big story today, yes. yeah. um, your thoughts on that development? Well, look, uh, as Ed McMahon just said in the piece that uh, Catherine Herridge just did, the FBI is filled with human beings. You show me an FBI agent that does not have a political opinion, I'll show you a, a dope. They all have political opinions, and under the law, they're entitled to them. But if the political opinion clouds an investigation or unduly animates an investigation, that person should not be in that investigation. And that's apparently what happened here. So we have two FBI directors. Jim Comey has no problem with Agent Strzok's uh, political views. Mm -hmm. Bob Mueller learns of the political views, wants him off the case. All right. So, I mean... I mean the, what you just pointed out, does it instruct the case? Do your political beliefs end up impacting your judgment? And that, that's what the president is saying here. The president is saying, look, I look at what happened to Hillary Clinton, and he's almost making the case that the FBI doesn't have credibility. He's saying, look at my case, look at what we're going through, and I'm demonstrating to you that their credibility is on the line because of the way they handled a similar case. They can't be trusted in this. Okay, case. I have not seen a transcript of the Q&A with Mrs. Clinton. We may, we may never see that. But think about Which this. Which wasn't under oath. Correct. General Flynn was not under oath. But at the time the FBI interrogated General Flynn, it's, it's January 24th. Donald Trump's been in office for four days. At the time the FBI interrogated General Flynn, they had a transcript of all five of his conversations with Ambassador Kislyak. Question, why were they interrogating him? They already knew he had the conversations. They already knew what he said to the ambassador and what the ambassador said to him. Unless the purpose of that interrogation was to trap the general. If that was the purpose, it succeeded. It is clear he did lie. And he admitted, he admitted on Friday it. under oath in a federal courtroom that he lied. So he's stuck with that. The FBI is stuck with it. Unfortunately, President Trump is stuck with it as well. Obstruction of justice. The definition of obstruction of justice is the interference with a law enforcement or judicial proceeding for a corrupt purpose. So if Donald Trump did say to Jim Comey, lay off of uh, Mike Flynn, and the purpose was Flynn suffered enough, not a corrupt purpose. The purpose was the FBI's got more important things to do. They're going to catch terrorists and bank robbers, not a corrupt purpose. But if the purpose was to prevent General Flynn from telling the FBI something about him, the president, or people around him, that's a corrupt purpose. Can the president be indicted? Never happened before. There's nothing to prohibit it. Is obstruction of justice can it form a basis for impeachment? Almost university in the legal community, yes. Yeah, it could start the political process. Which the then political process, which, Congress. which is in Congress. Yeah, correct, exactly. Which doesn't have the fine rules of evidence that we have in a courtroom. All right, we're going to take a, a quick break. Uh, Andrew Napolitano, thank you very much. Judge, Pleasure. thank you for being here. Not a break. Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. For months, Trump defenders have alleged that Robert Mueller's investigation is tainted with partisan politics. They've noted, for example, the strikingly high percentage of prosecutors on Mueller's team who are also major Democratic donors. The president himself has frequently echoed these charges, implying that the investigation is a partisan witch hunt concocted by his enemies to overturn last fall's election results, basically a coup. We haven't joined that chorus. Prosecutors, like military officers and surgeons, are trained to rise above their own politics in the service of duty, and most of them do that. In the absence of hard evidence to the contrary, it seemed wise to give this investigation the benefit of every doubt and wait for the outcome. We're Americans. We believe in the fair application of justice. We think that's what normally happens. Well, unfortunately, it's getting harder to maintain that faith. Two days ago, news broke that a key figure in the Mueller investigation, a longtime FBI official named Peter Strzok, had been removed from his job for sending highly political text messages to his mistress, who's another FBI official. Apparently, those texts attacked President Trump and expressed affection for Hillary Clinton. Now, ordinarily, this would not rate a headline. Even career government officials are allowed to have political views. But this is no ordinary moment. Peter Strzok is at the very center of the two most politicized Justice Department cases in a generation. 
Strzok was, first of all, deeply involved in the investigation of Hillary Clinton's private email server last year. At the conclusion of that investigation, it was apparently Strzok who changed the FBI's description of what Hillary did from grossly negligent to extremely careless. Now, the first description is a crime, the second merely a blunder. So, in effect, Peter Strzok exonerated Hillary Clinton in the middle of a presidential campaign. But then he kept going. Strzok went on to sign the document, the official document that opened an investigation into Russian meddling in the election. The very same investigation the Hillary campaign was calling for at the time, the one that has now completely overwhelmed the Trump presidency. And if that wasn't enough, it was also Peter Strzok, who, according to news accounts this afternoon, oversaw the FBI's interviews in January with General Mike Flynn at the White House, the ones that resulted in Flynn pleading guilty to felony charges on Friday. Apparently, Flynn had no idea he was being interviewed, and that would explain why he didn't have a lawyer present. If true, that would qualify as trickery. It would be unethical. Again, like Zelig, Peter Strzok in the middle of it. So you can see why Strzok's politically charged text to his mistress might matter at this point. What exactly did Strzok say in those texts? We still don't know the answer to that because, for reasons it will not even explain, the FBI won't tell Congress. So all the way back in August, the House Intelligence Committee sent a subpoena to the FBI asking for, among other things, information on why Peter Strzok was removed from Mueller's team. But instead of replying, the FBI simply stonewalled and said nothing. Well, that's not just infuriating, it's unconstitutional, because the FBI is not its own government. It's a single agency within the executive branch of our federal government. It's accountable to, among others, the United States Congress, and therefore accountable to voters. Keep in mind, nobody elected Peter Strzok to anything. You elect members of Congress to keep people like Peter Strzok in line. Now, when people like Peter Strzok decide that Congress has no power over them, they're giving you the finger and they're threatening democracy. That should not be allowed. And yet, amazingly, it's common. It happens literally all the time in Washington. Last summer, for example, Congress sought basic information about the infamous Trump dossier. Did the FBI pay for it or part of it? Did FBI agents believe the contents or use them to drive their Russia investigation? These are basic and central questions, and yet the FBI just ignored them. They didn't feel like answering, and they rarely do. Back in 2015, two Islamic did to shoot up a Muhammad cartoon contest in Garland, Texas. Remember that? Later, it emerged that an undercover FBI agent knew the two shooters personally, and it even egged them on to, quote, tear up Texas. That agent even traveled with the terrorists to the scene at Garland, was present right before the attack, and tried to flee as it began. It's hard to believe that actually happened in America, but it did happen. You'd probably like to know why it happened, wouldn't you? Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin would like to know. He's repeatedly asked the FBI to explain why it shielded terrorists, how it could have failed to stop the shooting that happened later. And yet he still doesn't know. Senator Johnson's requests repeatedly have been stonewalled by the FBI. A year before that, in 2014, Senator Tom Coburn of Oklahoma asked the Justice Department information about the gun that the Tsarnaev brothers used to kill a police officer right after the Boston bombing. He never received an answer to that question. We could go on. There are many examples of this, but the point is clear. The FBI is out of control, and not just in the Trump investigation, but much more broadly. An agency charged with enforcing a law clearly considers itself above the law. And that's a threat to you and every American, no matter who you voted for. Joe DeGation, but much more broadly, an agency charged with enforcing a law clearly considers itself above the law. And that's a threat to you and every American, no matter who you voted for. Joe DeGeneva is a former U.S. attorney for the District of Columbia, and he joins us tonight. Um, Joe, given the centrality of Peter Strzok, in these two investigations, Hillary email and the current Trump-Russia investigations, on what pretext could the FBI be denying these texts to Congress? Um, it's very difficult to see how they have any basis for denying Congress access to this data. Um, they publicly leaked the reason that he was fired, removed from the case. So there can't be a personnel reason for doing it. Right. And even if there were, it wouldn't matter. Congress has a right to that data. They can receive it. They have to receive it. I think what's going on at the Bureau right now is very, very serious. It's very depressing for a former federal law enforcement official. This is not your mother's FBI. 
What's wrong with the FBI is not the average F F everyday agent. They're great. It's the management at the FBI that is the problem, and that management has not improved with the, with the arrival of Mr. Ray. I, I cannot understand how Chris Ray, the current FBI director, can tolerate having Andrew McCabe on his staff at this point, given his history and his track record. I think the FBI is in very serious trouble. It started with James Comey. Comey, the dirtiest cop in America, destroyed the FBI's reputation with his bizarre personal behavior uh, beginning way before his July 5th news conference. The Bureau is in trouble. It needs a major overhaul. And if it continues to resist Congress, I believe the contempt of Congress for the current director and other people in the agency is absolutely justified. So this is the most powerful agency in the federal government that can literally break down the front door of your house and take your freedom away. And or, they do that quite a or bit. Or show up at your house in the morning while you and your wife are in bed in order to frighten you like they did with Mr. Manafort. What a disgusting, awful display of raw political power, not law enforcement power, political power. I think the Bureau has been politicized by Comey. I don't know what Ray's going to do about it, but he has a short time frame to fix it. Is it conceivable, and this was reported this afternoon, we haven't confirmed it, that General Flynn at the White House in January, newly installed national security advisor, meets with the FBI, talks to them. They don't tell him this is a formal interview, and it's on the basis of that that he's charged and pleads to perjury. It was Andrew McCabe who sent those agents there, by the way. Uh, the man who... But can you do that? Can yes, you, you, you actually can. But, but here's what's disturbing about it. It's technically okay to do that. But you have to ask yourself, given the history of everybody involved in that case, who were involved in the Hillary email server case, where they conducted a totally irresponsible, unprofessional invest, criminal investigation, and then they turn up the heat on this investigation of Flynn, the same agency. This is politics. The Bureau has been politicized. You compare the email server investigation of Hillary Clinton with the investigation of General Flynn and President Trump's aides, and what you have is a despicable politicization of the Bureau. They can no longer insist that they are fair at what they're doing. Well, it's the same charge. I mean, the same guy, Peter Strzok, apparently let the former Secretary of State off the hook for lying and then pushed the indictment on felony charges of the National Security Advisor for lying. So how is that? Mr. Strzok has been hopelessly compromised since he expressed his political views to his paramour uh, with whom he was ha another FBI official that he was having a sexual relationship with. Strzok is no longer credible inside the bureau. That's why he's now in the Human Resources Department. Right. Just just shakes the faith of every American in our justice and, system. And it should. And, and the cost is high. It, well, it, it undermines the country, quite apart from this investigation, Indeed. I would say. Joe, thank you very You're much. You're welcome.